The Infinite Vulcan is the seventh episode of the first season of the American animated science fiction television series Star Trek The Animated Series. It first aired on NBC on October 20, 1973, and was written by original series cast member Walter Koenig. It was the actor's only involvement in the series, as he had not been hired to voice Pavel Chekhov in the animated version due to financial issues with production. With The Infinite Vulcan, Koenig became the first member of the Star Trek cast to write an episode for the franchise. As with many episodes of the show, the episode was directed by Hal Sutherland. Set in the 23rd century, the series follows the adventures of Captain James T. Kirk voiced by William Shatner and the crew of the Starfleet Starship Enterprise. In this episode, the crew visit a planet inhabited by plant-based life forms and must save the life of science officer Spock voiced by Leonard Nimoy after he is abducted by a giant clone of Dr. Stavos Keniklius voiced by James Doohan. Koenig was hired to write the script after some of his work was passed from Susan Sackett to series creator Gene Roddenberry. Koenig found the writing process for the episode unenjoyable, due to the number of rewrites required. Further additions were made by Roddenberry, including talking vegetables as characters. When the producers offered him a second episode, Koenig turned it down. The Infinite Vulcan received a mixed reception from critics, who suggested that the writing could have been better, but others included it in lists of the best episodes of the animated series. Plot On stardate 5554.4, while exploring the newly discovered planet Phylos for possible Federation colonization, Lt. Sulu voiced by George Takei picks up a walking plant, called a Retlaw, and is poisoned by a stinger. The alien species that inhabit the planet, who are plant-like beings, approach the Enterprise landing party and their leader, Agmar voiced by James Doohan, saves Sulu's life. From them the crew discovers that most of the Philosians were nearly wiped out by a mild terrestrial disease that acted as a plague, brought to the planet by Dr. Stavos Keniklius voiced by James Doohan, a Terran scientist who had survived Earth's eugenics wars. A giant clone of Keniklius, named Keniklius V, kidnaps First Officer Spock voiced by Leonard Nimoy. He believes the galaxy is as war-ravaged as Earth was when he left it. He plans to enforce peace on the galaxy with the aid of a fleet of Philosian ships and a giant clone of Spock that he's created, at the expense of the original Spock's life. The newly awakened giant Spock clone uses his Vulcan telepathic abilities to mind meld with his original self and save his life. The two Spocks, in concert with Captain James T. Kirk voiced by William Shatner, convince Keniklius that the need for his plan no longer exists. Spock 2 and Dr. Keniklius 5 devote themselves to restoring the Philosian civilization as the original departs with his shipmates. Production Walter Koenig joined the main cast of Star Trek the original series during the second season as Pavel Chekhov and continued to appear in the series until it was cancelled at the end of season 3. Although the remaining main cast of the series were hired as voice actors for Star Trek the animated series, Koenig was not brought in due to financial restraints. He only found out about his omission from the show when Sackett announced it on stage at a Star Trek convention he was attending. Instead his character was replaced by a new animated character voiced by James Doohan. Koenig first became involved with writing a script for the animated series after he asked Susan Sackett, Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry's assistant, to type up some writing he was working on. After reading it through, she thought it was good and passed it to Roddenberry, who agreed and asked Koenig if he was interested in writing for the animated show. He accepted the offer, and started working on a plot involving cloning which was inspired by newspaper articles about the subject, becoming the first actor from Star Trek to write for the franchise. He found the writing process for the Infinite Vulcan unbearable. This was due to interference from Roddenberry, which resulting in Koenig producing 10 drafts of the screenplay, and because of Koenig's frustration in not otherwise being involved in the series. He could not understand why so many redrafts were required, a view shared by story editor-slash-associate producer D.C. Fontana. Roddenberry was keen in particular to make use of the benefits of an animated medium, by including things which could not have been shown on a live-action series. These included talking vegetables as characters, which Koenig said were not his idea but were so silly as to not be worthy of a fight. David Alexander, in his book Star Trek Creator The Authorized Biography of Gene Roddenberry suggested that Koenig was hired to write The Infinite Vulcan because Roddenberry felt bad about Koenig's exclusion from the series. Koenig asked to audition for the part of Dr. Keniklius, but he said later that it was lip service and they were not seriously considering him. He did manage to include a reference to himself in the episode, as the walking plant is called a retlaw, Walter spelt backwards. This was a reference to aliens in the 1940s comic book Planet Comics who spoke backwards. He later used a similar idea in The Stranger, a Land of the Lost episode he wrote, in which Koenig introduced the character Enoch. This character was originally called Enug, 
backwards for Gene as a reference to Gene Roddenberry. Kenig felt that the Infinite Vulcan turned out okay, and had heard a number of opinions on it ranging from it being the best episode of the animated series to it being the very worst. He felt overall that it was an interesting take and certainly a little different. Fellow cast member George Takei felt the episode showed that Kenig was enterprising. The producers liked the episode so much that they wanted Kenig to write another, but he turned them down. Kenig later explained that he was still upset at the time over not appearing as Chekhov in the series. Kenig Leas later appeared in Kevin Lauderdale's story The Rules of War, which takes place during the Eugenics Wars, in the anthology Strange New Worlds 9. Reception and Home Media Release The Infinite Vulcan was first broadcast on NBC on October 20, 1973. James Van Hise wrote in his book The Man Who Created Star Trek Gene Roddenberry, that some of the writing on the series, specifically that on The Infinite Vulcan, left much to be desired. In James Rundell's retrospective of the episodes for Sci-Fi Now, he gave The Infinite Vulcan a rating of 3 out of 5. The Infinite Vulcan was included in Best of Slash Recommend lists by some reviewers. In Wired Magazine's list of episodes of the series to watch after they became available for free on the official Star Trek website, The Infinite Vulcan was included specifically because it was the first episode of the franchise to be written by one of the actors. The episode was included in seventh place of the best episodes of the series by the website Topless Robot, who added that while Canaclius' plan was unclear, it had the greatest ending of a cartoon ever. This story was expanded into a novelette by science fiction author Alan Dean Foster as part of the collection of the animated series adapted novelizations and was released as part of Star Trek Log 2, published in September 1974. The other episodes adapted in the same work were The Survivor and The Lorelei Signal. The Infinite Vulcan was released on Laserdisc as part of the series set. The first release of Star Trek The Animated Series on DVD was through fan-made productions. The official DVD release was on November 21, 2006 in the United States, a single release containing all episodes from both seasons of the television show, 